It's really grimy, it's got the great power grooves, the double bass, the hard rhythms, guitars, the screaming solos, but in the same token, like I said, a lot of the formats are, it was kind of nice, it was kind of like stepping out of our show. It's not like we, uh, you know, it's not like we go, we follow any rules, and uh, I think we've certainly earned the right to, you know, step outside the acceptable box. I came a long way to be here, you know, for me to look back and I remembering when I was a kid in some park with a stereo listening to some shitty little, you know, cassette tape and, and you know, we were listening to Screaming for Vengeance, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, here I am in the car with Ralph Hoffman and it was just surreal. have this hellacious scream, man, it's brutal. And then Zoe kicks in with that riff and it's, it's, it's on from that point. I think this one's gonna relay really good live. This is one of those songs that just, this is why we started writing metal in the first place. Fantastic, man. It touches base on everything from religions to sour politics. So, um, yeah. It's, well, it's not exactly freaking a death metal song now, is it? Hey, man, get it I'm, right. I'm queuing past this one. No, it's, really, it's actually one of my favorites on the record, too, man. It's got, it's a different vibe. Uh, we kind of experimented with some different sounds. Yeah. Certainly some different drum grooves and stuff on this one. Um, it's just different for us. One of those those lashings. It's like you know, just ripping open your chest and letting the monster come out. It's just 100% raw anger. Great part about this one, not to mention that uh, again, it's just an absolutely brutal piece of music, is that we had one of our friends and another icon of ours, Max Cavalera from Sepultura and Soulfly. No, I won't out, but I could never surrender. Try and break me down, but I won't let you win. You can call me out. I think it's all so clear. Actually, Zoltan had brought it up. Uh, that there was a breakdown, or the breakdown in the song, that uh, it'd be nice to kind of have a female's twist on it. One of the first names to come up was Maria. And then of course Maria came in and, and sang on the chorus and uh, did a great job. And it's uh, certainly a standout track and I think, uh, I think everyone's gonna like it. Yeah. to have one of our old friends and one of the coolest guys in the world, Mr. Jamie Josta himself, stand in on this one. 
So I don't know what else to say about this besides bring your gurneys. spend a lot of time on the road and away from family and friends and I don't get to spend half as much time as I want to or for that matter should most of the time with, with my kids or the rest of my family. Um, so this was kind of my apology so to speak to the ones that we have to leave behind every time we go on the road. came to the table with the riff and everything. We sat down in the studio and it just came out fan-fucking-tastic, man. Love and then when Tech 9 came in, he just threw this killer fucking switch up on it. His so rhythms, man. Yeah. Oh, stupid good, man. So this is the final track on the first CD. This is called Diary of a Dead Man. Uh, originally, when the guys had sent it out, uh, it was supposed to be an instrumental. And I don't remember if it was you or if Kevin brought it up or whomever, but uh, somebody brought it up to me that they were like, you know, it's missing something. We need some kind of vocal stretch on it. You know, we got to do something. And uh, so I sat down and instead of going at it and making it a song, I did more of a poem over it. Here it is, Diary of a Dead Man. I'm sorry, I can't forgive you. Do you blame me? You never forgave me. I've tried to grow from this. Every day's a new challenge. Because with you, there's just no winning. Like it or not, I'm still a part of you. And you're still a part of me. Like it or not. You're still a part of me. Guess what? It just happened.